Melbourne's quite an interesting uh, outlier. You entered the COVID pandemic crisis when it reached your shores in a tremendously good state. Um, your, your center was 100% occupied and your team um, had achieved what is very rare in our business, uh, which is full occupancy. That's both a positive on the revenue and profitability side, but it's also creates a big challenge because you had a lot of clients to deal with. Um, how's, how's, how have, have you reacted and how has our business reacted to, to this uh, crisis? Well, I think we, as, as a business and as a center, we've reacted really well. We, we were in a good position and were 100% occupied. Um, this, this all happened so quickly. I mean, the social distancing came into effect on the 21st of March. Then we saw the closure of non-essential businesses. And with that, the Australian government urging us to stay at home, work from home, non-essential travel is completely off. So yes, the numbers dropped. We, we didn't see anyone really coming in to the center. We're six and a half weeks on and people are starting to come back. It's um, it's slowly, slowly getting back to normal, but if different companies have been hit in different ways. Some some have really found their stride and they're, they're coping and they're finding new ways to adapt with having to work remotely. And yeah, we definitely, we've had clients who have struggled and have reached out to us and we're just trying to work through it case by case and keep it as personal as possible. We, you know, like we have one center here, we're close to these people. You have businesses that were healthy at the end of the first quarter and are now struggling. I mean, what kind of industries are they from? I mean, what's the background of these businesses? I think the businesses that are that are not struggling, they're doing quite well, seem to be the IT-based industries. They're more vet and adapt to cope in this kind of environment. A lot of our consulting industries that rely on sort of face-to-face -face meetings, they're, they're really suffering. And we've seen a number of our virtual office clients, for example, who are on monthly rolling agreements, they, they said that we have no cash flow at the moment, we have to suspend, we have to terminate, terminate, which we understand. But the good news side of that is two of them called me back last week and said, look, I feel like we're actually we're, we're through the darker days. We're, we're getting some cash flow back in for the reinstate. So that says to me that there is light at the end of the tunnel and people are starting to come back. But it's anyone who's engaged in face-to-face in -face meetings that they're, they're struggling because they, we, we can't have people in social distancing has ruled that out. I feel that it's very hard to be a decision maker from home or to you know strategically progress matters because those type of decisions mm -hmm. require groupthink, consensus and initiative. And you know when you're isolated, you can maintain things, but I'm not sure you can progress things that efficiently. No, I agree. I think working from working remotely is nothing new. Uh, we've, we've all done it for years, but working remotely for such an extended period of time, you can start to feel a little bit disconnected from what, what is going on. So we try and keep in contact all the time. We're a very, we're a very small team in Melbourne. We're a family of five. So um, we, we have our teams meeting every Friday afternoon, 20, 30 minutes to catch up. But I agree there is nothing better than sitting around the table together or if I'm talking to clients or negotiating for a lease. You need that face-to-face to... -face to to read how someone's, how someone's feeling about a situation, to, to react appropriately. You have in the pipeline an expansion for our second center in Melbourne, meaning that we grow uh, on the back of our clients' demand for additional space. And, uh, um, you know, I know from other conversations with you that you are uh, fielding several large inquiries. Again, what, even during this COVID pandemic period, you're in communications for expansion with clients. Again, what kind of industries in Melbourne are currently planning for additional headcount and for growth when, when they can go back to work? So again, it's, it, it always seems to come back to the IT companies at the moment who are really looking to expand their footprint and grow. We, had, we did have a large client, we do still have a large client who is looking to move into 839 Collins. Uh, we were anticipating that was going to be the 1st of July, so obviously we've had to, we've had to offset that. I've been in contact with those clients and they're, they're feeling their own pain at the moment, working their way through this cloud of confusion. But they've managed to establish month-to-month -month rolling where they are and they're, they're set, they're ready to move with us when we're all ready to go. So I think we're, putting, we're keeping in contact with everyone and we're making sure we have the mechanism in place to make it as easy as possible 
when people are ready and when we're ready to get everyone in. You're a market with very low vacancy and yeah. because of the IT industry um, and other industries, you know, you have strong demand. I, I looked at the figures in, in 2009, post GFC global financial crisis, the Melbourne market came off about 10%, which was surprisingly not much, right? I mean, Hong Kong came off 44%. Uh, from top to bottom um, post the crisis. So your, your second center expansion, what you were originally going to open it in July. What's your revised thinking on the opening date? We're hoping that we can aim for October. So the first part of Q4 is, is what we're aiming for. I mean, uh, you're right, Melbourne, Melbourne does have really low vacancy rates. We've got the lowest vacancy rates in Australia. So there's, there's definitely demand for this new centre. Um, we're also seeing demand from our members here in CSQ, you need to expand. Move into that centre as well. Not that we'll have everyone leave here and move over there, but there's, there's definitely demand for the centre there. And all the brokers and agents in close contact with, they're really positive about the new centre opening. We've, we've really hit the Melbourne market with a bang. Your centre was very active on in, in the community area. Um, your, your co-working, your virtual office, your hot desking business, your, your, uh, you have a barista bar. But moving forward, are you envisaging any changes in how you'll be running these various aspects? In Melbourne, coffee is king. So that's, that's not going to change. Everyone's still going to want their coffee. <laughs> in fact, uh, Takeshi, our on-site barista, he has been coming in two days a week. So we have, we have still had members here throughout. So there's still people coming in wanting their coffee. We haven't been offering the food, the food services. I don't think people really want that service from us at the moment. And that's just something we're going to have to see how as, as this progress, as everyone progresses, as everyone starts to come back to work, see how, see if people want those services in the new centre. Um, I'd love to do coffee and croissant and avo sandwich offering. We need to gauge how people are going to react to that when, when we open the new centre. I, I don't know when, when the new norm is going to be. You know, our clients are, deserve to receive that which they subscribe to. You know, and the barista service and the environment and even uh, the smiles um, and the attitude that uh, you and we deliver to our members every day, that, that has to be sustained. That's why we exist. If we don't follow through on that promise, I don't, I don't see the, the, the point of, of the executive center. I mean, I think the pressures probably at times must have been you know, quite high and continue to be quite high because, of course, the COVID crisis mm -hmm. continues. Um, what's been your, have you been able to find a balance? For me, the silver lining of, of COVID um, has been, I, I, have a, I have an hour commute in either way. So I, I've gained those two hours back. When I'm, when I'm working from home, which has been lovely. I'd either go through, you know, a bit more of an extended run in the morning, um, actually have breakfast with my partner. Um, I mean, my, all my pets, they think it's great. They think I'm at home all the time now, which is <laughs> phenomenal. Um, but personally as well, I've, I've had time to reconnect with some, some old hobbies of mine that I've perhaps let, let fall to the wayside. I'm, I'm a very keen uh, classical and Spanish guitar player and have been since I was about 10 years old. And... Working um, so hard as we as we have been, sometimes you leave, leave those things fall to the wayside. But I, I pick I pick that back up, and that's been really rewarding. The, yes, a joy to get back into. In terms of managing the situation here and, and making sure the team is still very positive and upbeat, I mean that they do that on their own because they're an absolute bunch of champions. But we're we're very fortunate with the network that we have in Australia, and I've been. Speaking to the other city heads more than I ever have, we have our, our regional director who's reaching out to us, making sure we're all okay, everyone's staying so connected. So I feel really supported. And I think that'll, that'll be probably a, a bit of a change when we come back to work, the, the lifestyle work balance. That I think a lot of people will have to readdress that. They're getting used to um, working remotely. I wish you all the very best with your second centre opening later in the year. I think that... I think we will all find that a tremendously satisfying experience when that occurs. Um, and a reconfirmation of, of, of your success, your team's success, and the market's appreciation of our product. So, Thank you, Paul. Well, we look forward to seeing you in Melbourne when the centre does open. 
That's an invitation I'll be happy to take up. Coffee's on me. <laughs> All right, thank you. Have a, have a great day.